Thomas Tears videos are brought to you by my Patreons and viewers like you. Thank you. This was Rosie, the purple pinkish lavender character, or more specifically, a mauvey lilac colour as James says. She's more of a mauvey lilac. However, this is no longer her colour, because she is now repainted red. Specifically, a burgundy red. Not cherry red, a burgundy red. A colour much more associated with a mature female colour, as opposed to a younger pinkish colour. While feminine red is much more associated with lust and adult femininity, colours like pink are much more associated with younger girls and female childhood. Rosie is basically a reflection of overt female coming of age in adolescence. Even the name Rosie invokes memories of pink and red roses, which, again, flowers being very associated with the feminine. I've made it no secret that I'm a huge fan of Rosie, and I even plan to make a series about her one day, but unfortunately, there's a lot of baggage that comes with an overtly feminine character such as herself. Now, I'm no Sonic fan by any means, but there is a character in that series called Amy Rose, who is basically a female Sonic. Amy Rose comes with a lot of baggage, and Rosie is pretty much the same thing in Thomas, which was why the crew wanted to change her to red. But why was Rosie repelled? painted red exactly. No, I'm not asking for any gender politics or merchandise cash-in reasons or whatever. No, I want to know the specific in-universe reason as to why Rosie was repainted red. The last time we ever saw Rosie pink in the series was in this one shot in The Great Race where we see her pulling coaches along the Iron Bridge. And the first time we ever saw her red was in this scene in Journey Beyond Sodor and then again in this scene here in Hasty Hannah. So what was the in-canon reason for making this change to Rosie? The only time this was ever even acknowledged and canon was from this one line from James. Rosie's not fast, but she's not red either. She's more of a movie lilac. She's red now. Where he finds out that Rosie was red, and that's it. That is our only explanation for this huge character shift. Like, even with characters like Bulgy, they at least explained why he went from green to red. Or hell, even Thomas, we got to see him be repainted from green to blue in The Adventure Begins. So if you can do it with characters like Thomas and Bulgy, why was Rosie's just never addressed, considering it was such a huge change? This is a topic that me and A Sodor Life have discussed for years at this point, and so today Today, we are going to go over Red Rosie in the series. Hello everybody, A Sodor Life here, and today, myself and Adam are going to talk about the potential theories in regard to how Rosie went from pink to red in canon. While looking at the potential theories, we have provided some edits so we can give everyone a little glimpse of how these potential stories may have played out. I hope you enjoy. For this video, me and A Sodor Life are going to break down Rosie in the series. We're going to go through the history of how she became red, talk about how she got underused, and theorize on potential reasons on why this could have happened in canon, whilst trying to abide by the established continuity in the series. So, with all that out of the way, let's begin. A Rosie History so before me and A Soder Life get into our theories on how Rosie got repainted red in canon, I think it's first important that we go through the history of Red Rosie in the series. So, in the early years of the CGI series, Rosie was actually one of the first characters to ever be created in CGI, appearing in Hero of the Rails, where her wheels seemingly don't turn. It was a common error in the early years. She was also one of the few lucky engines to make it from the hit model seasons into CGI. In fact, I think Pink Rosie actually got more screen time in the CGI series series than she did the model series. Actually, come to think of it, I think Pink Rosie got more focus in the Nitrogen era than she did in the Brenner era, somehow. Yeah, Rosie was basically one of those holdover characters from the Nitrogen era that the production crew had no idea what to do with. They gave her a golden lamp in series 17, which was mm, kinda cool I guess, but for the most part Rosie was more or less ignored by the Brenner crew. I don't even think she got one speaking line as Pink Rosie in the Brenner era at all. However, despite this, the crew still got loads of fan mail asking for more episodes about Stanley and Rosie. The crew had done spotlight episodes on other characters like Scruff and Stafford or Paxton or even Flynn, which left many fans wondering, why not an episode on Stanley or even Rosie? They weren't sure what to do with the character, but it was clear that something had to be done. Eventually, the crew got into a meeting to discuss Pink Rosie. At first, the crew considered dropping the character altogether, but decided against this since fans wanted to see something done with her. They considered using Pink Rosie as a character as is, but 
but decided against this too, since apparently Ian McHugh and Andrew Brenner were not big fans of Pink Rosie. It was eventually decided in the meeting to change the character's colour. They considered all types of colours, such as blue and green, before settling on red. I find it so funny how Mattel thought that Rosie was this sexist character or something, just because she was pink. I mean, it's not like they owned Barbie or anything, one of the most overtly feminine pinkish girl brands ever or anything, but whatever. The NWR and the 37 on her side were actually suggested by Sam Wilkinson. Apparently Sam actually had a chart of all these standard gauge engines numbers in order when they first appeared in the show, which is where Rosie's 37 was pulled from. In fact, he actually told me this in person. McRue chose red apparently because it would create a funny plot between her and James, which would also become the story for the fastest red engine on Sodor. Despite Rosie being remade for pink to red in order to be deemed as less sexist, the only episode she had as Red Rosie was with her and James and her with Thomas dealing with relationships. Totally fixing the sexism there, guys. As to how fans found out about Red Rosie, well... Fans first found out about Red Rosie thanks to a post from Soder Allen fansite, where they claimed Rosie would be getting a repaint, a new home, and a larger role in Series 21. Needless to say, fans were over the moon with excitement. We had so many different theories about the character, such as, was she going to join the Steam Team? I mean, she was in the promo with them. Not to mention Ted Machete's in the background, just so happened to have a tree covering it. Was there a new birth in the shed? How was Rosie gonna be painted red? What was her new job? Was Edward or Toby going to be written out? Thankfully, Sif assured us that Rosie would be getting a much more prominent role in Series 21, and that nobody would be written out of the show. Oh. Oh. Well, that was a big lie. <clears throat> so, uh, but uh, despite what this post said, we never really did get an episode about her being repainted red or even getting a new home. We did see her get a home in series 22, but again, it was very undercooked and was never properly explained. So much changed about Rosie in series 21. From getting a new red livery, to her getting a new job at Vickerstown, to even having a new shed. So it is really weird that they apparently had no plans to do any episode about this, according to Ian McHugh anyway. As I said in my last video, I emailed Ian to ask if Rosie was ever going to get an episode about being repainted red. I even suggested one of my head cannons to him, but he said that only the fastest red engine on Sodor was planned for that season. So it's just so weird to me, with all the hype that they put into this redesign, that they wouldn't just give her some explanation for how this all happened. It's such a shame, but whatever. So now that we've gone through the history of Red Rosie and how she came to be in the series, let's go over some of the theories that Adam and I have cooked up for how she became Red in canon. So the last time we saw Rosie Pink in the series was in The Great Race, where she was pulling passengers on this bridge. And the first time we see her Red is in Journey Beyond Sodor and in series 21. That is the time frame we're dealing with here. So now that we know roughly when we last seen Pink Rosie and the first time we saw saw Red Rosie, let's go through some of the theories on how she may have received her red livery in canon. And for this theory segment, we started off with the most simple, logical, and short explanations. And as the theories progress, they will start to get more progressively creative as we go on. Starting with the most simple theory. Theory 1. She just got repainted. <laughs> yeah, this is probably the most obvious one and is technically the way that they address it in canon, but the most simplistic theory about how Red Rosie became red is that she simply just got repainted. As fans, we tend to overthink these plot lines, but perhaps the most simplest explanation is the truest one. After all, not every change in canon needs to be addressed, right? I mean, in the fastest red engine on Sodor, it's mentioned that Rosie is repainted red. She's red now. I just saw her today! Rosie is red! And that's all we really needed, I guess. In fact, this scene is even set up in an earlier Series 21 episode, where Thomas actually sees Rosie delivering Hannah at Knapford, and Thomas actually spots Rosie being red for the first time. I just saw her today! Think about how casually the show treated her red repaint. Even if we did look at the season where she got her redesign, Rosie had cameos of her being painted in red before her great reveal in the fastest red engine on Sodor, as seen with Hasty Hannah. It's funny, for how such a big reveal, they really underplayed it in the series. I'm kinda with James on this one. Why is James the only one reacting correctly to this? Other than that one time where he had dementia in Journey Beyond Sodor, but um, whatever. Rosie is red! Rosie is red! Rosie is red! 
While it's weird that they would never properly address it in canon, I guess the simplest explanations are sometimes the best. Theory 2, Victor. This is another more simplistic theory that we thought of, but perhaps it was Victor who suggested that Rosie be repainted red. After all, Victor himself said in the past that red was his favourite colour. In fact, in Blue Mountain Mystery, it was even mentioned by him that red was his first word in English. My first word was red. After they brought me to the steamworks and repaired me, I had to be repainted and red was the colour I chose. There's also this scene in Who's Jeffrey where Thomas mentions how the new engine was repainted red. By the way, what colour is this uh, Jeffrey? He's red. Red. Hmm. Very smart. So perhaps when Rosie came to the Steamworks one day, it was Victor who suggested that she be repainted red. It's kind of a simplistic idea, but one that does actually kind of work with Victor's character. Considering Victor repainted Reneus yellow as a quick joke to Thomas, perhaps he also suggested it as a joke to Rosie about being repainted red. But she took it literally. Wow, Victor. Between painting Reneus yellow, Rosie red, and both Bill and Ben blue, I'm surprised Topham hasn't taken away your painting privileges yet. I wonder if he was also responsible for Rebecca. Hmm. I mean, she was yellow at NWR too. That last one was a joke, but I mean, if we're explaining Rosie, why not Rebecca as well? Theory tree. New job, new paint. Okay, so this theory tries to explain why Rosie has Northwestern initials on her side. Now, as we already discussed, it was Sam Wilkinson who suggested this idea. But why was it that Rosie was the first engine in the TV series to have these initials? Well, perhaps it had something to do with her working at Vickerstown. Keep in mind, Vickerstown is like the connecting area between Sodor and the mainland, meaning that lots of engines from Sodor and the mainland would be in the yard. So maybe what happened was that Rosie simply got a new job at Vickerstown for whatever reason, and to help better differentiate differentiate her from the other mainland engines, maybe it was decided to just give her Northwestern Railway markings as a way of knowing straight away that she was an NWR engine. And while she was getting her markings, maybe it was then decided to give her a number and one thing led to another and eventually she just got repainted red too. Kind of like how this Minnie's Rosie toy suggests that happens. Also, side note, I find it so funny that this Minnie's toy of Rosie somehow had more lore than the actual show itself. Very funny indeed. So maybe it was a case of giving her more identifiable markings with her new job. Perhaps that's the reason she was the first engine to have NWR initials on her, since she needed to be more identifiable from mainland engines. Though seeing a brightly painted pink engine should be a pretty big giveaway that it's an engine who's from Sodor, but whatever. Theory 4, Bulgy. This is a theory that I had for quite a while now. It is stated in the season 22 episode An Engine of Many Colors by Kevin that the steamworks are out of red paint. I'm sorry boss, but I can't find any more red paint. We have plenty of blue paint though! Which, mind you, is supposed to take place during season 21 right after James's accident in the fastest red engine on Sodor. Coincidentally, during said season, we were shown two returnees who were said to have red repaints at the time. You really are red! Yes, I've been repainted! I thought you'd been turned into a hen house. Oh, only for a while. Then I was a mobile vegetable stand, and now I'm back in service. I believe that Rosie may have taken possible inspiration from Bulgy when he went through his repaint. I can visually picture a scenario where Bulgy pulls out of the steamworks, who sees Rosie about to puff in. Rosie would question his shift from once being a mobile vegetable bus back to being a passenger bus. When discussing this with Adam, he imagined that Bulgy could have teased Rosie for her pink livery and say something along the lines of, the color red is for important vehicles, and use examples such as himself and Victor. Knowing how cocky Bulgy was characterized in the CGI era, I can totally see him boasting about it. I think the Bulgy theory could work very well in canon, considering that Bulgy presumably got repainted from red to green around the same time, as mentioned in Unscheduled Stops, perhaps Bulgy getting repainted red at the steamworks would also explain Rosie choosing that colour too, would also explain why they ran out of paint in An Engine of Many Colours. While I like the Victor theory, I kind of like the Bulgy theory just a little bit more with the way it works better into the Series 21 episodes. Theory 5, the Rosie Crash Theory. Much like the Bulgy theory, this one actually works quite well into the established episodes in Series 21. What if the reason and Rosie got repainted was because she had a crash off screen. Okay, I know that seems like a bit of a cop-out explanation, but hear me out here. There's actually quite a bit of evidence to back this up in Rosie's episode. In the opening of The Fastest Red Engine on Sodor, we get this scene with Thomas and James at Knapford, where Thomas mentions about the time James had a crash in The Adventure Begins. Don't forget that time your wooden brake blocks caught fire! Oh. Ah! 
But then James mentioned about how he got repaired and was repainted red. But I got rid of my wooden brake blocks and I was painted red! Now it's odd that they would reference such a specific scene in The Adventure Begins, even showing footage from it. But what if this reference was also relevant to Rosie? Keep in mind, this was the same episode where Rosie was repainted red. Remember, the reason the Fat Controller painted James red instead of blue was because he wanted to make him feel special after his crash with the wooden brake blocks. What if Pink Rosie had a similar situation, where she also got into a nasty accident, which wasn't her fault, and the Fat Controller felt bad for her and tried to cheer her up by giving her a new red livery? That would also explain why she's the first engine to have NWR markings on her side and a number, because it was meant to cheer her up. And it would also explain why she never mentioned how she got her painted red in the episode, because after having such a serious crash, it was probably a touchy subject for her to bring up. I mean, James certainly didn't like to bring up his crash, so... This would also explain her change of character too, like how she's much more cautious about signals than James. Red signal, James! Uh, come on! James! And how she's a lot more strong-willed and mature, which would make sense after her character having a transformation like that. This would also maybe explain how her and Henry became friends too, perhaps bonding over the misfortunes that they both have. Speaking of which, Theory 6. Rosie to the rescue. For this theory, I tried to come up with some of the loose ends that were left unanswered during Rosie's reintroduction, such as why was she given a number? How did she suddenly get close with Henry? Or what made her a permanent station pilot at Vickerstown? I imagine Rosie formed a strong bond with Henry through arranging his goods trains for him at Natford Yards every morning. We can have a cute interaction with them chatting and whatnot. I strongly believe it is important to establish a dynamic between them as looking back, out of all the main characters, Henry makes the least amount of sense to pair him up with Rosie, but I digress. I agree. Out of all the characters you could have picked, Henry and Rosie is probably the most random pairing ever. Like, did they even get one scene together before? It feels less like pairing up characters for fun, and more like, let's put all the reject characters in the shed, but whatever. So, at some point in the story, Henry would get himself into a tricky situation and Rosie is the one who saves him, as seen with the episode, Emily to the Rescue, an engine committing an act of heroism is regarded as high praise by both the engines and Sir Topham Hat, enough to reward said engine with a number, which is where I primarily think Rosie could have gotten both her numbers and her NWR initials from. Her choosing to go from pink to red may act as a metaphor in the story from once being naive and young when being pink to becoming more mature and independent by being repainted cherry red. I would also imagine Sir Topham Hatt would be proud of her act of bravery that he promotes her of being full-time station pilot at Vickerstown, showcasing that he trusts her well enough to be in charge of running one of the busiest stations on Soto. Theory 7. Rosie and the Railway Show and a New Norm now I've talked about this theory in the past. Hell, I even mentioned it to Ian McHugh in our emails earlier. But basically, this is what my headcanon is for how Rosie got her red repaint in canon, while still trying to stay consistent with the continuity of the series. So, since the Great Railway Show was the last time we saw Pink Rosie, and she would later become a shunter at Vickerstown, I wanted to try and figure out a way of working this into the plot. This episode would take place during the Great Race. All the engines are talking about the Great Railway Show. We start out with Pink Rosie in Napford Shunting Yard, where she sees a sign for the Great Railway Show, and much like Thomas, she really wants to go, but all the other engines put her down. So, to prove that she can be really useful, Rosie decides to take a passenger train up to Ulfstead Castle, which we actually see in the Great Race. At the castle, Rosie meets Stephen, who says that he thinks he knows who's going to the railway show. At first, Rosie thinks he's talking about herself, but then he clarifies that it's in fact him who's been chosen by the Earl to go to the Great Railway Show, and Rosie feels sad. This would also help address why we actually see Stephen at the Great Railway Show in the movie. The next morning, Rosie is back in the shunting yard on the day of the Great Railway Railway show. She's sad because she thinks someone like Thomas is going to be chosen for the great race. Just then, Stanley comes racing in and tells Rosie that the Fat Controller wants to see her straight away. Something about Thomas being in a crash or something, and the Fat Controller wants Rosie to take his place. I also thought it'd be nice to give these two a scene together. Rosie is excited and races off to Knapford. She thinks that she's going to the great railway show. However, it turns out that the Fat Controller wanted Rosie to pull Thomas's local train after him being in the crash with Norman. That's right, Rosie thought she was going to the railway show, but nope, she was just being asked to cover Thomas's drain. Poor Rosie. Later that day, we see Rosie pulling the local with Annie and Clarabel, while Thomas is at the steamworks. I, I kind of like the idea of giving these three a scene together, since I don't think they ever had one before. The three continue along the line, just past the steamworks, when suddenly, they hear Thomas coming up the line. Thomas! Thomas! Exclaim Annie and Clarabel as he passes them. What are you doing here? Asks Rosie, as Thomas races by. Thomas shouts back that he's taking Gordon's safety valve to the Great Railway Show, leaving Rosie stunned. Not only is she not going to the Great Railway Show, but now she's doing Thomas's job too, while he's going away himself. Later, we 
we see Rosie pull into Vickerstown, where we see Donald and Douglas pulling Gordon's Express, again paying off their scene here from The Great Race. Rosie explains how she's sad that she's not going to The Great Railway Show. However, Donald and Douglas both assure Rosie that there's plenty of ways to be really useful. So, with Donald and Douglas's advice, Rosie decides to be really useful by helping out in the shunting yard at Vickerstown. Now, I like to think that Norman was the main shunter at Vickerstown, as we often see him working there in the background. But since he was in his crash with Thomas earlier, I like to think at this time he was out of action, and so Rosie stepped in for him in the yard. Later that night, all of the Sodor engines return home from the Great Railway Show. At Vickerstown, Topham sees Rosie shunting and arranging trucks. He gets out onto the platform and congratulates Rosie for not only covering for Thomas, but also keeping the Vickerstown yard running while Norman was out of action too, and for helping run the railway while he was gone. It's then that Topham decides to promote Rosie to a new, busier job at Vickerstown, and because of her hard work, rewards her with not just new repaint, but also a new number as well. And yeah, that's pretty much my headcanon for how Rosie would have gotten her red repaint. However, that's only part one of the story. Part two is a new norm, where we follow it from Norman's perspective. So Norman is one of those characters who really got no focus in the Brown era. Unlike Sydney or Paxton, where they got loads of stuff to do in that era, Norman was always the overlooked character. However, with this Rosie coming to Vickerstown, where Norman, I think, was a shunter, I like to think this would have been a really good chance to expand on their characters. So, Norman's solo episode, A New Norm, would have started off with a literal bang, where we see Norman get into a crash as he did in The Great Race. We would fade into the diesel works, where we see Norman on a hoist. Norman says that he is always breaking down, but is still looking forward to getting back to work at Vickerstown. However, Den and Dart eye each other up, knowing that Rosie has already replaced him at Vickerstown. Norman goes back to work at Vickerstown Yard, where he sees Rosie working there. There's a bit of funny confusion between the two, where they both offer each other trucks or something, before realising that they're both shunters in the yard. After this point, the episode basically becomes that Cranky and Carly episode, where they both start fighting over work, and start trying to one-up each other. Basically that episode, but, you know, actually good, and it's with Norman and Rosie instead. Eventually there's a huge crash in the yard, and Topham sees the crash happen, and he actually blames Rosie for it, saying that she wasn't working together with Norman in the yard, and then he says that he's going to send her back to Knapford or something. But just as Topham says this, Norman quickly chimes in and says that it was his fault and that he should be the one who's punished and sent away. Topham looks at the two engines before giving them a speech about how they should work together. Again, very similar to the one that Salty gave to Carly and Cranky. Soon Rosie and Norman learn to work together, and the two of them both become shunters in the Vickerstown yard. And yeah, that's how I think Rosie became red in the CGI series. There's a lot of stuff I really like about this theory. Not only does it give a grander context for her scenes in The Great Race, like this Rosie cameo here, or Stephen at The Great Railway Show, or Norman's crash, but it's also cool seeing the movie from a new perspective, kind of like the Toad Bright Idea episode. We also get to see dynamics we'd always wanted to see with Pink Rosie, such as Annie and Clarabelle, or her with Stanley, and it's fun getting to see Norman in episode 2, since much like Rosie, he was always a very overlooked character. I think the two of them could have had a very fun dynamic at Vickerstown, with one being the red diesel and the other being the red tank engine. But my favourite thing about this theory is that it actually gives an in-universe reason for Rosie being repainted red, which actually works in the canon pretty seamlessly. While answering all of myself and a Sodor Life's questions about Red Rosie, instead of opening series 21 with the two Daisy and Diesel episodes, I think this little story arc with Rosie and Norman would have been way better. But even with these two episodes, I think you still can have the James episode later in the season, which would have been such a better payoff, and would have still worked way better in the season's continuity in my opinion. But what do you all think? Did you like our theories about how Rosie got repainted red in canon? What theory do you think are the most plausible? I personally really like the railway show one, with how it worked into continuity. But let us know what you think. Please do, and also I want to give a massive thank you and shout out to my friend A Sodor Life for helping me with this video. We've both been planning to make a collab video for years now at this point. I think we both agree that making a Red Rosie video was probably the best topic for our first ever collab. Many of the great edits used in this video are actually by him. I really appreciate him doing this for me, and I highly recommend checking out his channel too. Thank you so much for inviting me, Adam. Though, I don't think this will be the last of us collabing. At least, not so soon over at my channel. Huh. Indeed. So, thanks all for watching, and I'll let a Sodor Life finish this video by saying my outro catchphrase. Thanks for watching, everyone, and Slana Walia. Did I? Did I say that right? Yeah, you did great. <laughs> okay, phew.